guilt is I did something wrong. Shame is I am something wrong. And I felt both of those things. I did something wrong. I am something wrong. And then when I, so I'm, I'm going to move forward. So as yeah. I move forward doing shop, bro, in the first year I had to go see a shrink again. Thanks to Mike King, he shouted at me a shrink because I just hadn't seen one for a while. And I had all this stuff started coming up being sexually molested. And I thought I was holding mess memories for somebody else. That's how my mind was dealing with this. Oh, you're holding like a memory stick. Someone gave me a memory stick. Oh, these aren't my memories. Mm. I must be holding this for somebody else. And I didn't realize that those memories were my memories of yeah. me that I'd suppressed. So I've got all this stuff suppressed, brother. That's And, and when I meet people who have been through trauma, even worse, way worse than I've been, we compartmentalize it to survive. So yeah. we pack it away to try and move on. But you don't realize throughout your life you're fight, flight, or freeze. Yeah. And your interactions... You don't even know that are guided by those three pillars. And so you, when, when you don't know what's wrong with you, you'll just keep continuing this this way of behaving. Mm. And when I meet other people like me, male and female, who've been on the journey, uh, we've got so many similar traits, like a physical, mental, spiritual outlet mm. to help others show them like, hey man, you're not crazy, you're hurting. Because I was told I was crazy. And then either that or I was dismissed. Yeah, who, who told you you were crazy? People were telling me crazy. Right. And um, so, you know, and think about families. Families don't want to deal with your mental illness, which is, I'm not blaming families. I'm just yeah. saying they don't have the tools to deal with it. And our parents' generation and our grandparents' generation, this was, uh, this was one of the ultimate shames to have, have somebody with mental, uh, having a mental breakdown. So all of that stuff is buried and you're dismissed. Mm. You're either dismissed and dissolved or told to just shut your mouth. Yeah. Can I just share a little on aside? Yeah. That when she said about the John Cohen ad, when John Cohen would speak about his problems on the TV and no one was around, I'd be telling John to shut up because him talking was irritating my mm. demons. And so as I go around Australasia, sometimes me talking, irritates other people's demons because mm. they don't want to hear it. They've, they've drunk enough, done enough drugs or done enough whatever they have to squash it down. Mm. And when someone else is speaking as freely as you and I are, on the couch over there could be someone going, what's those two? Shut the F up because, man, it's freaking me out. And so I understand that now. Before I used to think I was... I was the problem by for for talking about. It. Yeah. I used to. I've been made to think that I was crazy because I was speaking out aloud. What I realise is you're crazy if you don't address this. Mm. You, you talk about Sir, Sir John Kerwin, Mike King. Mike King helped me on my journey. And um, did you did you know Mike before two thousand and nine? No, I mean oh. of course I knew who he was, yeah, yeah. but I didn't know him at all. So my mental breakdown. I ended up on the Nutters Club, which was uh, the, his which radio is still, show, yeah, which is still yeah. going. Uh, it's a great show. Um, talking about mental health openly, and I'd never met. So I met Mike King and, a, and his right, one of his right hand men, uh, Boris Sogratov, and I'd never heard two males ever speak so openly and vulnerably, and normally about mental health, and it freaked me out. I thought this must be an alien planet. I've never heard men speak like this before, and it, it helped change the game for me. Not then because it freaked me out, but much later down the track when I started the shop bro journey, mm. I realised where the doorway was because two brave males showed me what it's like to talk normally about your mental health. Yeah, I suppose um, in a way like the Nutters Club and that platform that they gave you, that's um, it's kind of like the Brene Brown thing, eh? It's yes. like you show vulnerability and you, it's like you put your cards on the table and then lets the other person know that it's a safe space and they can put their cards on the table too. 